You can't cover turf for shit. Look at this shit. Look at it! In order to swim around, you'll often have to overspray for longer than most weapons just to make a decent path. This weapon is also very ink hungry, and you move very slowly while shooting compared to most weapons. Pair these three things together, and along with using sub weapons, you'll almost always be low on ink. If Splatoon 2 is the club, and ink is getting with someone, then Splattershot Pro is the thirsty dude who can't really get any. That was a really terrible analogy, but I think you get the point. This weapon's range is too long to be classified as short range, but too short to really be considered long range. The 52 gallon tenant tech are better shooters at close range, and the jet sculpture is better at long range, leaving the pro in this weird middle ground. Since the pro's ink has very little spread to its shot, it can be hard to hit people unless you're perfectly aimed at them. It's difficult to describe it in words, but your bullets feel small compared to other shooters. And lastly, there isn't much reason to use the Vanilla Splattershot Pro over the Dually Squelchers. The two have the exact same range, the same sub, Squelchers have an arguably better special, more mobility while shooting, more turf coverage, and while there are 4 shot kill instead of 3, the significantly higher fire rate makes up for that. Plus, they have the new sliding Dually Dodge Roll. Splattershot Pro is a classic weapon, an elegant weapon. Its greatest weakness, its inability to turf well, stems from its greatest strength in that the weapon shoots extremely straight. You see, most weapons in Splatoon cover an area in front of you, however with the Pro, like most other shooting games, your bullets mostly go where you're aiming and nowhere else. This is the type of weapon for people who have really precise aim, which I do not. Combine that with a good range, a pretty okay fire rate, and the fact that it's a three shot kill, and this is one of the most versatile weapons in the game. You're pretty good at short range, you're pretty good at long range. You're not that great at covering up large amounts of turf, but your special weapons help make up for that. Also, the Pro was recently buffed in the most recent update, so now it's even better than before, and it was already pretty good. Your bullets fly faster, making it easier to track people's movements and secure kills. While this weapon is very versatile, it really excels in one area. It's not so much the rush in and get kills weapon, nor is it the hang back and play support weapon. It's really the get to mid, lock down the area and control it weapon. You generally want to remain calm, be precise with your aim and deliberate with your actions, and let the enemy step into your range before you step into theirs. There isn't a ton of difference between you and the Tantex range, so when facing off against them and similar weapons, keeping them near the edge of your range is key. It's like when you're just hooking up with someone who you think might be a little bit crazy, you don't want them to get too close. If there's room behind me, and someone with less range, like a Tantec or an Enzap, is closing in in front of me, then I like to play like a complete coward, and swim away from them to the point where they're in my range, but I'm not in theirs, and then start shooting them. There's no point in trying to strafe players just by running, since you move so slowly while shooting, so swimming away is usually your best option. Keep in mind that when you're shooting, unlike most weapons in Splatoon, and this might sound a little strange, but it'll make sense when you're using it, you can't just shoot in the direction of your opponent. You actually have to aim at your... Fucking pop. Aim at your opponent, and be really good at tracking their movements. This is much easier to do at long range than up close, because of your low fire rate. And if you're using motion controls, which I highly recommend doing for this weapon, you have to be sure to keep your aiming reticle still for all three hits. You don't want to be like me and lose in overtime because you're exactly one shot short of getting the last kill. Another method to help you get kills is that since you have pretty good range, you can cut off an enemy's escape route behind them before you actually start shooting directly at them. 
a tactic that works for literally every weapon. The pro is good at maps with long corridors and spots to get up high, like Port Mackerel, Manta Maria, and the Reef. But just watch out for jet squelchers, heavy splatlings, and chargers since they'll outrange you. Okay, for the rest of this video, I will be referring to this as the Pro and this as the Forge. So in Splatoon 1, the Pro had bombs and ink strike, and the Forge had point sensor and ink zooka. But now in Splatoon 2, the Pro has point sensor and the Forge has bombs, but not the same bombs the bombs that the Berry Splatter Shop Pro had. Maybe if and when the Berry comes back, it'll have splat bombs. Or maybe splash wall or auto bombs or toxic mix because fuck continuity. I use both the Pro and the Forge in all four modes, however I prefer to use the Pro in Turf War and Zones, and the Forge in Tower Control and Rainmaker. In Splat Zones, the Pro is great for either locking down the zone and keeping enemies backed up near spawn, or spraying the area from the outside in and helping to keep it your color. Some matches, like this one in Starfish Main Stage, I just stayed on the right side of the zone, preventing the other team from approaching the zone from this side, gave my teammates someone to jump to, and sprayed the zone from this side, similar to how a heavy splatling might play zones. And while the ink storm can definitely help retake a zone, it usually isn't powerful enough to do it all by itself, so I usually spray towards the zone immediately after throwing up the cloud. In tower control, this is one of the few instances where the stickiness and delayed explosion of the suction bomb really comes in handy, since on defense you can throw bombs at the tower and they'll just stick right to it, forcing your opponents to jump off. If there's not much time left and you're already winning, you can just keep spamming suction bombs at the tower to keep people off and prevent overtime. The bubble blower can be really handy as a shield for when you're riding the tower, especially if the tower goes by a wall, you can deflect the bubbles off the wall to keep them nearby. They can also be useful as long range support if you see one of your teammates pushing ahead to cut off the enemy's approach. The bubbles mostly serve as a distraction, and really aren't that deadly, but people think they are, so use that to your advantage. In Rainmaker, the Forge is really good at making paths for the Rainmaker carrier to swim through, and suction bombs can help pop the shield and zone out opponents from picking it up, although there are a number of times where I've used the Pro instead and done pretty well, since Point Sensor can help your whole team find the enemy and help you with your aiming and the rain cloud can help you push forward and slow down your enemy's approach to the Rainmaker. Honestly, just use whatever gear you want and experiment to find what works for you. But here's what works for me. For both the Pro and the Forge, Ink Saver Main is a must. I recommend using at least one main of it, if not more. I've seen some people use run speed to try to mitigate your slow walking and shooting speed, but I personally don't use it. Rather, I just use some extra swim speed and avoid enemies by swimming away instead, but that's just me. More swim speed can also help you juke out and close the distance between you and longer range weapons like the Jout Squelcher, Spatlings, and Chargers and bring them into your range. Two abilities that pair really nicely with swim speed are ink resistance, to keep you from getting stuck in enemy ink, and the ink recovery to help you refill your tank faster while swimming around. For the Pro, I like to use a little bit of Ink Saver Sub to help stave off the cost of throwing point sensors, especially considering I'll sometimes throw multiple in different directions to help scout out enemies. Haunt is also, in my opinion, a pretty underused and underrated ability, so I'll use that sometimes, combined with a point sensor to really let my team know where the enemies are at all times. In Splat Zone specifically, the Ink Storm can help turn the tide of battle, so using Tenacity, Special Charge, and or Special Saver can help send up more clouds. If your team gets wiped and you're in a Special Charge and Special Saver, you can even do this.
Okay, that might have been a little bit over dramatic. For the Forge, I generally use more Ink Saver Sub than I normally would for the Pro, since I like to use a lot of bombs, and sometimes sub power up to throw them even farther, but that's just me. I don't run any special related abilities for it, since while the bubbles can be useful, they're not that much of a game changer. And thanks for watching! I plan on making a couple more of these weapon guides for the weapons that I enjoyed using, even though I'm not exactly the best player ever at this game. And to demonstrate that, here's a very mediocre montage of some of the things I talked about.